Okay, first off, I'm using Webcamoid to record this. This is, of course, the latest Ubuntu LTS 24.04. And uh, that's not the standard wallpaper. I like it because it's got their old tagline. Yeah, I'm using Webcamoid. Now, just quickly, I need to let you know that if you want to record your desktop under the default login, it won't work because Webcamoid will not record a Wayland desktop. So you just log in at the login screen. At the bottom right of the screen, you get the option to change uh, the display manager to uh, X11. So I'm on X11 on Ubuntu 24.04 and it's allowing me to use Webcamoid to do a screencast, believe it or not. That's pretty good. Um, you can take snaps as well and you can set your sources for whatever you choose under here. I'm not going to change any of that right now because it might uh, mess up my recording. But anyway, that's what I'm using, Webcamoid. Now, why am I not just using the default that comes with GNOME 46, which is this snapshot? Snapshot does not record audio. It will record video and it will record still images for just demonstrating bits of software, whatever. But yeah, no audio. So uh, I'm not using that for that. Why have I installed Ubuntu 24.04? As a person who is not a fan of System D but just about manages to live with it, as somebody who absolutely loathes Canonical's Snapcraft and Snaps for their security and other little niggles, theming niggles. Apparently, a lot of that's all been sorted out, but <clears throat> I just wanted to try this and approach it as a new user to Linux in general and Ubuntu specifically. I wanted to see what the experience is like on a new install and do you know what it's been all right I've had this installed for a couple of days now well a lie a day or so um, booted three times um, so far fairly pain-free I did get a seg fault closing down my GIMP now let me tell you about, I've got all my favourite software, I've got my Focusrite uh, LMMS for the music, Inkscape for the vector art, uh, the GIMP for photo editing and painting, Audacity, VLC, Strawberry Music Player, again, Webcamoid. Um, managed to install pretty much everything I need without reverting to using a snap of them. Firefox, you're stuck with, mate. It's uh, Snapcraft, Snap, by default. There is a way, apparently, according to Joey Elijah Snedden on OMG Ubuntu. Don't want that page. I'm just showing that about uh, why we're using GNOME Snapshot instead of Cheese. Cheese ain't available anymore. Okay. It must be in my bookmarks. Okay. Yeah. How to install Firefox as a deb on Ubuntu, not Snap. Now, this was updated on the 31st of January 2024, so I would imagine that this works on 2404. So if you want to find that, go to OMG Ubuntu, how to install Firefox deb apt Ubuntu 2204. Uh, if you need to find it just by scrolling through the blog, it was updated 31st of January 2024. Okay. Let's sod that off. Do I like it? Yeah, I do, but I've got newer machinery now. I've got more recent stuff, so it should run really well, and it does. Previously, I was on really, really old machines or really, really underpowered machines, um, and it was a little sluggish. I would imagine this would still be a little sluggish. They, the installation requirements, system requirements for Ubuntu 24.04 is... A minimum of a 2 gigahertz dual core processor, 4 gigs of RAM, and I think it's 25 gigabytes of disk space. 
So this should install on pretty much anything out there, but your mileage will vary about whether it's smooth, fast, whatever. I'm quite lucky, on this machine it seems to work all right. One thing I haven't tried though is um, touch screen. I guess the touch screen works. I'm using my finger now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Seems to work. <clears throat> so what can we tell you about 2404? Right. Okay, this is what I've got installed on it. So Hewlett Packard Pavilion Laptop 14-DV0 XXX. The processor is an Intel Pentium Gold 7505 quad core. I've got eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of disk SSD. It's a, I think it's an M2. Not sure. It's a, it's a, it's, it's the 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 card rather than the drive. Do you know what I mean? So here's the information. It's using GNOME 46. I'm using X11, uh, and uh, GNOME 46 is built on the GTK4 libraries. So just a heads up. It's okay. I don't mind it too much. And I don't mind it too much because of this, right? This is the app center. This is where the new user will mostly get most of their software from. Let's do a search for something. I don't know. Uh, let's say writer. So as you can see, when you do a search, you get a list of the available snaps. Mm, let's leave them alone. But it also lists the available Debian packages. So I could install LibreOffice Writer as a deb in the uh, in the app store so where there is an alternative to snaps it will display it so there we go that's all I need to say about that um, what have we got this up? oh yeah 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 so after installing all my software when we do the snap list this is what we get, the usual snap crap in the back end, GNOME itself, and the only one from a different developer is your Firefox. And as you've seen, there is a way of evading that, or getting rid of that and installing from a deb provided by Mozilla. Yes, Mozilla now have a repository just for Firefox and I guess you know, the email app that nobody uses. <laughs> yeah, so they've got their own repository that you just need to add and then install back and from that. Apparently though, there might be issues with when you do an update, it might bring back the snap. Nothing to do with Mozilla, everything to do with Canonical. I'll let you find that out for yourself because I'm going to stick with the snap. Oh, I hate myself. Okay. What else did I want to show you? Yeah, this isn't one of the stock wallpapers, by the way. The stock wallpapers are these. I will show you. These are the ones I've added. But these are the ones that you get. That one. Well, let's bring it down here, shall we? Yeah, nice reflections and a couple of stumps. Why you'd want a background wallpaper with a couple of stumps in it, I don't know. Uh, I believe that's Mount Fuji. This is the light dark one, the numbat, whatever a numbat is. Here's another numbat, they look quite cute. Nice kind of vectory monument valley landscape. The Aurora Borealis. A pastoral scene that's ruined by its execution. That would look nicer as a photo, quite honestly, or an oil painting, not this vector stuff. And I'm a big fan of vector art. Here's a big old light bulb. Yeah, and this crown, which makes it look a bit. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Normally, the Ubuntu wallpapers, where they've got a, a logo and everything on, I quite like. This one, I think, is a bit naff. Look at it, it's naff, isn't it? It's a crown to say noble, and there's the numbats on top of it. Yeah, 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 we get it. Canonical, we get it. Okay, and then there's a black and white one if you want. There's a grey one if you want it a bit lighter. Yeah, 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 
Yeah, no, but I'll stick to my own, which is these, not my own, I say, but the ones I've chosen. So I'll stick with that because it maintains the Linux for human beings thing. I just want to cover one more thing, actually two more things. The one more thing is if you are used to using top or htop to look at your system load usage, whatever, and running processes, there is an alternative that I've only just recently discovered. You're all probably using it already, but that's btop. Now you can launch it from its own little icon once you've installed it and there it is. That's pretty nice. Gives you a good old overview of everything. Your memory use, your disk usage, the network usage. This will show spikes as and when the network is being used. This is, I guess, the CPU usage. It's fairly high at the minute because I'm recording the desktop. Um, but yeah, that's quite nice. Uh, B-top, so there you go. Yeah, you can launch it from, oh God, so t terminal size too small. Come on in, come on in, there you go. All right, so that's cool. So you can launch it from the menu icon or you can just type B-top. There you go. Q to exit, and everyone's a winner. Right, that's one thing. Nice little um, system reporter and resource usage. Is this a Windows killer? A lot of people have been saying, this is it, this is the end for Windows. Windows 11's coming out and it's, it's going to be updated and it's going to be full of AI and it's going to lock you down and you've got to have 8 gigs of RAM or some, or some sh I don't know. The rumour mill is running rampant. Is this a killer of Windows? No, it bloody isn't. No version of any Linux operating system or Unix operating system or BSD is going to be a Windows killer. It's not going to happen. We said it had happened when Windows 10 came out and it didn't happen. There is a creep of people using more Linux bases, but is that because of the popularity of Chrome OS? Swapping one locked in system for another? Do you know why Ubuntu is not going to be a Windows killer? Do you know why the multitudes are not going to all flock over to Linux? Uh, when they're forced to use Windows 11 at the end of October 2025. I'll tell you why. Because 99.9% .9 of PC users never install an operating system. They don't. It's something that comes with the hardware they buy. And that's the way they've always worked. And that's the way they always bloody will. This is not going to suck custom from that Microsoft user base. Because... They're not people who do installs. They're not people possibly who've even heard of Linux. They just open their machine. They don't even know they're running Windows, probably, except for the constant reminders. They just turn on the machine and run their apps. That's what most people do. This is not going to kill anything. So, just to let you know, no, no. It's not a war anyway. So anyway, that's the end of this video. Ubuntu 2404. I don't mind it. I wish it didn't have snaps. But. Yeah, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I just wish they'd do away with the snaps. The way they did away with Mir. The way they did away with... Unity, the way they did away with Convergence, the way they did away with the Edge phone. Canonical have got a history of innovations that nobody's asked for or wanted, which fail. But they keep going because they're business backed. Linux for human beings? Maybe the human beings at Canonical, hey? End of video. I'll shut up now. Get on with it. Try it if you like it. I don't mind it. I might keep it around. Might. But the Linux world, we're all very curious people. We are the people who do the installs and we're already running Linux. Ta-da. Be good.